Hey. hey, welcome to Mama and Jess Moment Tech Show episode 13. And for today, the topic is children are like arrows. We have a young, well mannered woman of God with us today by name Lady V, which is what I actually call her. I was inspired for her to host this show because she is a child advocate and has a special calling for children. You are welcome to Mom and Just Moment Tech Show. Thank you Lady very v. much. Thank you very much. And I'm much. sure our viewers would love to know more about you. Okay, my name is Vera Emeka Mbembere, Mrs. Um, I'm a child advocate, a writer, and inspirational speaker. Oh, that's a whole lot package. So you guys should sit down, relax, and catch up. Once again, you're welcome. Thank you very um, much. Based on the topic for this episode, okay. children are like arrows. We just want you to start by giving us, you know, a thorough explanation of that depiction from the Bible passage. Okay. Um, before I define what an arrow means, I would like to read the Bible. I love the version of the New International Version. It says, children, I have, um, I'll start from verse 3, actually, Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. It says, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with the opponent hmm. in the court. I love that, opponent. So I love that word. Some version we use when they contend with the enemy enemies in the court or the gate. So the thing is, what are arrows? Hmm. Arrows in a warrior's hand is a weapon. Hmm. And the truth is, if you have a weapon and you're going for war, it is for war. Weapons are for war, uh, weapons of warfare. And you're going for war. If it's not sharpened, you're just going there for nothing. Because you're going to use it. And yet, it might disappoint you there True. when you most need it. So you have to sharpen it for it not to disappoint you on the needed day. True. And now we are. Uh, the Bible is likening children to arrows. So what is it telling us that our children are weapons of warfare when we need them? In the past, when like um, in the olden days, when parents, there were times when communities parents cannot go to meetings because they don't have children. There were times when when parents were farmers. And you know the number of your strength and ability is, is is actually measured with the number of children you have. So this this but these days people get to understand that actually it is not by your strength, it's not by your power that you have you, you have children. True. It is by the grace of God Absolutely and mercy. True. He said, "I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy upon." So He gives to who He chooses to, to give. give. So if we say children are arrows, if the Bible says children are arrows then it has given us, uh, 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 will I put, it has, it has put on parents a duty to sharpen that arrows for the day you will be needing it for your warfare. Absolutely true. Thank you so much for that delivery. And having said that, I just wanted us to digress a bit. Okay. Looking at the societal pressure, you know, we bringing up your children, you're bringing up your children in the right way, and then they're mixing up with other children in the society. Jess, what do you have to say about, you know, children mixing up? Do you, do you have any question you want to throw to Auntie V with regards to pressures generally from your experience that children face? Well, I, in fact, I don't have a question, but I would like to contribute um, okay. about that so I feel that in other words children well the, the, in my um, what do you call it in my opinion I feel that children are pencils in which you use to write and then when they start mixing up with other people then they start becoming blunt and then you can't write with them anymore hmm. so I feel that when as a child you should know who you are mixing with like 
because uh, by their personalities and and the things that they do you want the best for yourself as a child so um you should start mixing up with the right people who who will have a positive impact on you to become a greater person one day thank you so much for that she has said it from a children's perspective. Yeah, Maybe be please address it from the parents' but it's, perspective. But it's, that's their mindset. That's, that is, it's, it's what is within. If you don't speak to children, actually, you will not know what is within them. True. You just feel that they are children. And that is where we generational mothers of these days get it wrong. We believe that these children, they don't, they don't know. It, someone will tell you that, ah, what does he know? What does she want to say? But actually, they have something to say. Absolutely true. If you if you put them down and you speak with them, you will know that they have something to say. Things are bothering them. They have competitions. They, they have face emotions. challenges. They face. They have emotions. They have feelings. You know. But if you don't establish that bond, that communication with them, you will never find out. Wow, wow, and that's gives us the you know that makes us understand that it is essential for parents to pay attention and communicate properly with the children. With children. So but unfortunately we look at our society today, parents are busy. Parents are busy. Very true. Compared to what we see in the days of you know our own times when we're growing up. Our parents will come back, they have time to, you know, catch up with us. I remember having story times with my dad, story times with my mom, you know. So but we see ourselves being caught up with so many activities. Lady B, what's your take on that? Okay. Um, when it comes to child guidance, upbringing, child rearing, you know, there's, there's just like Jesus said to, is it to Mary or not to Mata? I, I can pick one of the, that. There's, she has chosen what is needed. There are things that are needed. Essential. If you choose money over the upbringing of your child, I'm sorry. When you will need the child, the child will disappoint you. And mm. that is when your arrow disappoints you. This is deep. That is when your arrow disappoints you. Don't cry over it. You cannot blame the child. I always tell people when they say, ah, my child this, my child that. As a we are one-sided for crying out loud. True. Absolutely. Maybe in a way the parent has to be blamed. You did not establish a relationship with me right from when I was young. And now you, es you expect. expect me to come and care for you, uh, tell you this, or be there for you. I don't know how. It's not that I don't want to, but I don't know how Child because I was not taught me. how. True. True. I can only give what, what I, I have. have. You can you can absolutely true. I can That's give true. what I have. But what I don't know how to, you cannot I can you there's a, an adage that says you can't teach a child to use a left hand at old age. It's not possible. He must grow with That's it. Money. And that is where the bonding comes in. That reminds me of a case of a little um, a she's a teenager in Joburg and it's a life story who went for um what they call this thing sleepover sleepover with the friends and it took the friend's mother to discover that the little girl was on drugs hmm. but the mother does not know about it so how does she tell the mother that your daughter is on drugs without being you no know, labored giving a bad name or without offending her or making her feel disappointed but she had told her she has to find a way. You must tell her. You owe her that. Just tell her, find a way. But make her understand that she mustn't condemn, as in condemn the arts. Don't condemn the child. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lady V. And then leading to our next question. Okay. The issue of discipline. Where do we set the boundaries, like when it comes to discipline a child? Because when I listen to there was a study I came across concerning, you know, children are like arrows. It was explaining why arrows needed to be sharpened and shaping mm -hmm. before it's being thrown, you mm -hmm. know, literally, I would mm -hmm. say. But practically, how can a parent shape and sharpen the arrows in terms of discipline? What's essential, you know, how far can you go with, you know, this discipline of a thing so that it won't be too deep or too... First of all... 
one area that should not be taken for granted in child upbringing is the God factor. God factor. God factor, you want? First of all, the God factor is there. As you are guiding according to the will and word of God, impacting your children with the word of God, inculcating that word of God into their lives. At the same time, you have to, you know, talk. You do the talking, whether we like it or not. You will, you have to do the talking, mm. you know. I will, somebody said um, it was because of the, the uh, Ella was not persistent with, you know, he talked, but he wasn't persistent in uh, admonishing his children. That was why they, they kept doing what they were They're doing. doing. You don't just say it once and say that I've, I've talked to her about it, I've talked to him about no. it, and you, you it has to key. be persist, be persistent about it. They will tell you yes, even when you are reciting it, they will help you recite it because <laughs> mommy is always saying such a thing. But it's not their fault, you know. But it has seen. Another thing is how we live our life. Exemplary figures. How do you live your life? I was watching a program where a lady said she has been praying for the son to, you know, she's a TV host in, in one of those television shows. So she has been praying for the son to change, talking to the boy about Christ, preaching, you know, and he wasn't forthcoming. So one day, as he was praying, God said to him, how are you living my life? The life I've given to you. How are you representing me to your child? Wow. And that was when it dawned on her that the child believes that she's a hypocrite. She's saying she's a Christian and she's living the oh, other way, you know? Oh, and my. because of that, it's not entering. You are just doing what... And she started... When she started, she, you know, put so many things aside... aside she stopped the drinking. She stopped so many things she was doing. She didn't have, have to utter a word. The boy just changed. Yes, and God. people were asking, how come? What happened? So yes, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That is one part of it. Another thing, when it comes to discipline, you see people, people believe that, um, uh, how do they say, spare the rods and spoil the child. It's all about beating. Mm, true, especially in our African society, <laughs> you guys can relate. If you're African and you're watching yeah. this, you people believe relate. it's all about beating, but it's not true. True, a rod can represent so many things. There is a beating. Some children interpret beating for hatred. True, and they get rebellious. Once you beat them, they will tell you they, 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 the worst you can do is to beat them. Mm -hmm. And they see it as, you hate me. That is why you always want to beat me. I've seen such instances. Yeah. It's true. But the thing is, sometimes you don't need to beat. You need to talk. You know? Mm. You need to talk. And at the same time, there are ways you can actually deprive children of what they love so much. That's another method. Yes, you deprive them of what they love so much for a period of time. And you will see them change. I was going on campus one day and a child was, in fact, eh, he was misbehaving. The only thing the parent did was to hide her, uh, himself. He was working with the dad and the dad just, you know, hid behind a flower and was watching him. And the next thing he turned, he didn't see him. He cried, shouted, <laughs> I will behave myself. I will behave myself. Daddy, I will not do this anymore. Oh, please, where are you? Just show yourself. And the mom was laughing. And the moment he came and said, I, 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 won't, I won't misbehave. I'm going to be. Aww. You know, you could see that, you remorse. know, he was remorseful. Okay. Meaning he can abandon me if I misbehave. And, you know, and, <laughs> and that was that it. Was it. Hmm. You can beat a child and yet the child will not change. If you like, beat me from today to tomorrow. Mm. You, are, you know, they get, but you can not get used to be king naturally. That is it. That is it. Some people will say that um, 
my my parents beat me and i turned that well i saw that on facebook and somebody said i don't like this statement but the thing is are you really sure you turned that well that is the question true are you sure that beating does not have a psychological effect on you like self-esteem i know are you sure it did not deal you know touch on your confidence level like that's how I, I, I was heading to because I've had cases where you know you get so smacked and beaten and you know and it, you you know you it, withdraw you into your shell. Your shell. I've, I I know of a friend that experienced you know, that. And so up, up we, to this very day, she's she's still going that's that. the thing. Mm -hmm. So we cannot because we want to you know discipline our children and will cause more harm. We have to be careful about it. Thank you so much. Lady and P. everything we are doing, I always say, it, let's do it in love. In love. Don't hit a child without the child knowing why you are hitting him or her. Mm. Don't discipline a child because without the child knowing why you are doing what you are doing. He has, he or she has, has to, to understand. understand why you are doing that. True. And when you are done, please reassure the child of your love. Don't just abandon the child like that. You hit with the left or they, they say you hit the with right. the right. If you, then you draw the child closer with your left. That is what mm. it means. Mm. True. You don't just discipline a child and you leave the child to deal with the emotional baggage that you have caused alone. It doesn't go away. Mm. It might take some time. He might get over it, but it will not leave immediately. And tell me when that thing continues, it becomes a problem. Yes, it does. Wow. The DV has delivered. Viewers, you can hear that. You know, hitting a child is not necessarily the form of, you know, discipline. There are other means, like, you know, depriving the child. I love that issue. I actually learned from that. I think I will also apply it to my children because I don't do so much smacking, but I do a lot of yelling. I will, <laughs> I will admit. Oh God, the Holy Spirit is helping me. Oh. Yeah, Holy Spirit is helping me. We're all learning. Good. And yelling has, learning. has its own problem too. Too. Yes, true, because true. some children, my sister's uh, daughter, when you are when you yell at her, she will just be looking at you. <laughs> and I, yes. <laughs> And believe me, she's not listening to what you are saying. When wow. you are done, she will say, Mommy, can you repeat what you have said? Oh, I'm my here. goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yes, she will tell you, I'm here. You don't need to yell at Yeah. Me. I'm mm. here with you. Just repeat mm. what you have said. Mm. We actually grew up with that. See, now our parents do it. But God will help us. A lot. God will help us. That's, that's something that, you know. And, and that will lead me to ask this question. Okay. The, we look at the way our parents raised us, you know, there's, I, I feel like the generation now can hardly, they don't have that, um, should I use the word resilience or perseverance to cope with, you know, the kind of discipline that we actually coped with in our time. Yeah, was as discipline, as was punishment, not discipline. Oh, punishment. Hmm. We are punished, we are not disciplined. Absolutely. You can't get away with just anything mm, at all. We we are made to do what we, even if you don't like it, you will do it. You do it. But the children of these days, we are not in well informed the way they are informed. So they know they are right. They know where they are coming from. They know where they are going to. If you don't tell them, the internet will tell them. True. Their teachers in school will tell them. True. Their parents will tell them. So when you tell them to do something, they will ask you why. Why why should i do this why should i do that so that is the difference there is difference in generational mm, upbringing i can see there is a difference there is a difference so we need to understand them the generation now the, and, yes you know? and we follow them suit and we don't Holy impose Spirit what our us. amen we don't impose what our parents did mm. in the past on this generation yes some things by work we pick the ones that are good and we drop the ones that are not you know beneficial to our kids these days wow thank you thank you so much lady v viewers i know you are blessed with what she has said please can you give our viewers a take home <laughs> okay i love the word of um pastor funke felix Adejimo, where she said the child you nurture today hmm. we nourish you tomorrow amen so nurture your child today and the child will nourish you at your old age. 
church. And may that be all of our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. With that being said, we round up our episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.